Whew. New stuff again. Seems like I'm getting a lot of new stuff recently, but I think this is just a coincidence. I don't really get new stuff all the time. It's just that I've been ramping up uh, preparations for Paris West Paris, which is like less than six weeks away. Wow. So anyway, let's check this out. Hi everyone, welcome back. For those of you who are new to this channel, my name is Adrian. I do cycling videos. I also talk about cycling, well, among other things. And today I'm gonna check out some new things. Let's get this knife out. Probably need just get the short blade. Here, cut this here. And is that it? Ah, is it the wrong side? Confusing. Yeah, I should be cutting this one. Okay, should be enough. Let's get rid of the blade. Ah, these boxes are confusing. Hello, hello, hello. Am I supposed to? Okay, okay, I get it. There's this little pull tab here actually. Ah, not perfect, but let's keep going at it. They taped over the pull tab. That's why it didn't pull like that smoothly. Alright, here we go. Okay. Waterproof rear pack. Uh, this is going to be the main feature of the video today, so I'll leave it for last. Uh, Brevet reflective gloves. Full fingered gloves for cold weather cycling. Uh, supposed to have reflective tabs. No idea if this is gonna work. Have a look at it later. Merino leg warmers. Made of a uh, merino wool, supposed to keep my legs warm. Interesting thing, I got leg warmers, but I didn't get any arm warmers. I figured that if it was cold enough to need arm warmers i'll probably be wearing a jacket anyway so no point in getting arm warmers reflective over socks yeah these are supposed to go over my shoes because uh, i'll be wearing triathlon shoes which are more open than regular shoes so if it gets cold i need something to put over the shoes Winter collar. Huh, interesting. All right, with all the little stuff out of the way, Let's check this out. 
Hmm. Capacity wise, it's supposed to handle 10 liters. And the reason I got this was because it has a hard bottom so that when you pack all the stuff in the bag, it doesn't sag. Now, with my other uh, saddle bag, I have to pack the bag very carefully. I can't just loosely throw things in it because if I do that, the back portion can sag and start to rub on the rear wheel, which is bad. So I thought this little hard shell thing might be interesting. So let's try to put this on the bike. Let's go. Wow. Okay. Got the bike. Let's get this installed somehow. Oh, it's not using quick releases. Instead, it's using well ordinary buckle mechanism. Okay. Uh, this is the waterproof back portion. Silica gel. Hmm. Ah. Okay, when they say 10 liters of capacity, I think I believe them. But first, let's get this uh, installed on the bike somehow. Okay, so it's this way. Oh, I need to take the thing off. Okay, I got it off. There is a, uh, what do you call? A safety tab. I don't know whether this will focus properly or not. Focus, focus. There is this uh, additional thickness, some kind of safety tab here. So I think that's uh, making it harder to come off with. But it's also a good thing for safety purposes. Okay, both sides off. I guess this thing goes over the saddle rails. Oh, hang on a bit. Now I can worry about this later. Put this on first. Yeah, getting it to go through the safety tab is problematic. But I guess once you install it, you don't need to take it off. I'm already sweating and it's still in an aircon room. Ah, come on, come on, come on. Then. Go through, okay, this is one side. Just one side. There's a, sec a second side to go. Okay, the second side went a lot easier. I guess I'm starting to get the hang of it. Uh, Houston, we have a problem. Okay, I'll figure this out another, another time, but... The Velcro tab here is a little bit short for an arrow seat post. Okay, so the way this thing is supposed to work is I fill up my bag. This is supposed to be waterproof, so I fill up the bag with all my stuff. Uh, what's this? Another warning label and card and stuff. Yeah, so I'm supposed to fill it up and then the thing slides through here and then gets packed up. So let's fill this with stuff. So this is my six liter bag. So since this is 10 liters, 
uh, everything in this should be able to fit in nicely. Okay, spare tire. Spare change of clothes, everything is in one vacuum seal waterproof bag. Toothbrush and toiletries. Spare, some spare cleats, some velcro, some zip ties and stuff. Spare tubes, uh, brake pads. Uh, uh, what do you call this? Um, Rim tape, yeah, rim tape. Uh, yep. Power bank and additional stuff which... Well, accessories and stuff. Uh, muscle wrap, chamois cream, first aid kit, uh, garbage bag. Tools, uh, I've got my mini tools and my CO2 pump and uh, tire levers and everything inside. Yeah, it looks like a big garbage bag, doesn't it? Anyway, yeah, there's still some space left for probably a second day of clothes. So that's just enough for PBP. It will probably actually pack a lot smaller if I pack everything properly and carefully. Right now, I just dumped every time, everything inside which is actually a kind of a good simulation because if uh, I'm stopped at some checkpoint or stopped at a hotel, I'm probably not going to try to carefully pack everything. You know, if I rush for time, I just want to reach in, grab stuff, get out, then do whatever and throw my stuff back in. So it won't always be perfectly packed. So this is a simulation of an actual scenario. Okay, so the way these kind of roll top waterproof bags work is you're supposed to roll them up. Although without an air intake or air exit thing, this is a little trickier because you get air inside. Though I suppose the air is a good idea because um, it helps keep some kind of shape okay now I'm supposed to clip these two together like this let's pack it in I'm not sure how this works I guess I should just go over something like this and yeah, you see, this is like, this is a very bad gap, but that's only because I haven't tightened the straps. Alright, I suppose this is how I'm supposed to do it. I guess right now, this is uh, kind of how it looks. And because of this hard uh, case down here, there's actually supposed to be some kind of insert. I think it's an aluminium insert or something and it keeps it uh, sturdy. It prevents it from sagging. I wonder if I got this wrong. Should I be inserting it the other way around? No, nah, I don't think so. It's definitely this way because it's kind of wedge shaped. So you know that it's supposed to go in one way only. So the main um, advantage of this, I guess, is the insert that prevents sagging. Also, how easy it is to just unclip, pull everything out. Uh, access your stuff. Throw everything back in when you're done. And then roll it up. Oh, it is actually a little porous. I don't know if that's the right word. Because I can actually feel some air coming out from this section. Hmm. 
so yeah just slide it in clip this on and I don't have to worry about sagging I don't have to worry about uh, trying to tighten the thing try I mean I mean uh, based on my previous back I don't have to try to tighten everything to make sure that it doesn't like sag down only one issue though huh. where do my lights go this bag does not have any light uh, hoops or loops well those are the pros and cons of this uh, saddle pack I'll try to figure something out first if if I figure a solution for my lights, then I think this would be a great bag to bring to Paris. If not, then I guess I'll just go with my current uh, Topic bag loader. Not this one though, this is only 6 liters. I have another 10 liter version which is actually trickier to manage because the 10 liter one will be longer. And so I have to be even more careful about the way I pack the bag, otherwise it's gonna sag. And sagging means rubbing on the wheel and no good. No good at all. Aha! So that's where the air actually comes out from. There's a little hole here for air. Oh yeah, there is another air hole uh, on both sides. So I guess this is on purpose but because of the way you pack it into the bag uh, the top and bottom shell should prevent water ingress anyways I'll figure this out in the meantime uh, thank you for watching I hope you enjoyed this video uh, leave a like and subscribe if you do it helps the channel grow and I'll see you in the next video bye Oh hey, before I go, I uh, just wanted to mention a few other little odds and ends. I mentioned in a previous video that I lost some lights, so I went out to acquire some new ones. Cat Eye Reflex Auto Takes uh, AAA batteries. Uh, the main thing I like about this light is the long run time because uh, for Paris Best Paris, uh, rules are quite clear, no blinkers, so your light has to be constantly on. So, little USB rechargeable blink uh, lights may be problematic. By, by problematic, I mean you have to charge them, so, you, so which Usually it's fine, I can bring a power bank and charge them, but I also have to charge my front lights, I want to charge my phone, I want to charge my uh, my cycling computer. A lot of things need charging, so one less thing to worry about is better. These take AAA batteries, I can carry a whole bunch of loops and uh, constant runs up to 30 hours. 30 hours is like... It's good for what, two nights. And just in case I lose this one, I bought the second one. Here's a monster. Cat Eye Volt 1007. Now the 1007 is 1700 lumens of power. Actually, I, I didn't actually want to get this. I was looking for the 800. Because I already have another 800 and at low power, 200 lumens, it can last quite a, quite a good while. But the shop I went to didn't have stock. They had the 1007. But I'm amazed at the low power capacity, which is uh, 15 hours, 200 lumens. That's, that's nearly two nights, okay? I know one full night is probably 12, 10 to 12 hours, but I'm probably not going to write an entire night. There'll be rest and sleep, so at most 8 to 10 hours. If it's 8 hours a night, then this will last almost 2 nights, which is very good. Also, 
if I wanted to blind someone with it, wah! Obviously, I don't plan to use it in full power. Full power is just insane. But low power alone is already very good. So, yeah. Hope this is worth it. Some kind of reflective vest thing. Uh, honestly, I don't really need it because uh, they are actually giving an official vest out for Paris West Paris. But, I don't know, I... I saw this so might as well just get it, it's cheap. I bought another large fuel tank bag. Uh, nothing wrong with my old one actually, it's just my old one is kind of uh, weathered and frayed. So especially some of the velcro connecting points are kind of flaky already. So rather than risk something happen, might as well bring a new one to Paris. Yeah, so that's that for this week. Uh, I think I pretty much got everything that I need. I may get... Uh, depending on how that saddlebag works, I'll see if I need to uh, tinker or modify my equipment load out a bit. But I'll see. Less than 6 months to go. So thanks for watching. Uh, again, hope you enjoyed the video, blah blah blah, and bye!